Hello folks. Um, we're going to have a little demonstration here on the Earth Tools adjustable axle extensions which we build. Uh, I've got another video you can already find showing how to put them on and how they basically work, but what I didn't do is show a set of them fully mounted to the tractor and the easiest way to actually adjust them. So, uh, what the Earth Tools adjustable axle extensions are, it consists of this inner post that's mounted to the hub of the tractor uh, here. Uh, and then this has a bunch of holes in it, of course. And then we've got the inner, or the outer hub, I should say, which is bolted onto the wheel itself, or onto the wheel rim. And then when the pin is removed, as I've just done, you can slide this thing in and out to achieve different axle spacings. It's all fine and good. Uh, one thing I want to show is, well, let me put this pin back in so I get this in the proper position. Well, maybe there it goes. You can see what I'm doing down in that hole. There we go. So. These, this particular set of wheels on this BCS 853, we've got set up with our little hub spacers here. These are, uh, these are little uh, heavy steel spacers we put in here with longer bolts. Uh, we, we, we equip many of the new tractors we sell with these, both 749s and 853s and 852s, because these pieces added to the wheel rim between the inner hub of the wheel and the outer rim of the wheel give us the correct spacing to run the rotary plow without having to buy any extra extensions. So in this particular case, we've got those mounted as well as the adjustable axle extensions, which would actually give us too wide a spacing for the rotary plow. The rotary plow likes about 17 to 18 inches between the wheels, 16 minimum. Uh, right now we're running more like, you know, 19 and a half, 20 inches between the wheels because we've got the adjustable axle extensions on there as well. So if uh, normally if I was going to run a rotary plow on this thing, you wouldn't need to have these extra little spacers in there. You could take those out and just use shorter bolts to attach this hub directly to the rim. Uh, and then the spacing would come out pretty much perfect with the adjustable axle extensions at their minimum position. Uh, but for the purposes of this video, we went ahead and slapped them on a tractor that already had those spacers on them since we kind of include those at no cost with most of our tractors. Um, so you see what the minimum, what the inside spacing is now, roughly 20 inches. So we could straddle something that was 20 inches, like a 20 inch bed. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and crank it out to the maximum width position. Now I've grabbed a big pry bar here from Ken, who's also filming. Ken is our service guy, so he uses things like pry bars. And uh, we're going to do this the easy way. So I'm going to, instead of just picking up on this to change my axle post, I've now added a whole bunch of leverage. So I can put very little force up on this and hold that with my knee and just slide this out to the new position. Where is that hole? There we go, I can feel the hole there. All right, there's that. Now we'll do it on the other side. Gather a pin. The phone is ringing, but that's okay, somebody else can get it. We'll go to voicemail, we're technically closed now anyway. Oops, I don't need that, I just need to send this out. Okay. Feel around for where that hole is. Oh, there it is. There we go. Another thing that uh, thing off. another thing that you can do with adjustable axle extensions is you can buy a second set of these inner hubs that that bolt to the wheel rim, bolt it to a second set of wheels, and slide both sets of wheels onto this inner post, basically giving yourself an instant set of dual wheels because we sell all the components for these adjustable axle extensions separately. Um, so, you know, if you, if you want to put duals on your tractor for really steep slopes and then be able to take the duals off very quickly, a set of adjustable axle extensions lets you do that very quickly. Just 
you know, slide the second set of wheel on, put the pin in, you got duels. When you're done with it, slide the pin out, take the wheel off. Uh, you can also, if you have different types of wheels you like to run on the tractor, for example, if you need super high traction in some situations and you want to get the steel, like iron cage wheels with cleats on them, you could have a set of those hubs mounted to that set of iron wheels and then another set of hubs mounted to the rubber wheels. Pull the pin, slide the wheels off, slide the other one on, put the pin in, bang, you're in business and you can switch out wheels within a minute. So now that we've got these uh, slid all the way out to their widest position, we can straddle a 35 and a half, actually from tire tread to tire tread, we've got just about, uh, about 36 and a half inches. To the inside of the tire, to the inside of the tire, we've got 35 and a half inches. So we can straddle pretty much a 36 inch bed uh, with this configuration. I'm gonna fire the tractor up and show how it maneuvers. Obviously it's gonna take up a lot more space and doesn't maneuver in as small an area uh, with it like this, but that's just the nature of the beast. Independent steering brakes on the larger tractors, it'll still maneuver very easily. In fact, with the wheels out this wide, the tractor, the wheel has much more leverage to turn the machine. It's like putting a longer pry bar in the hole there. Anytime you move it out from the center, you're increasing the leverage. You know, it really spins around on a dime and gets the steering brake. Now, um, when you're running with the adjustable axle extensions cranked out, you know, to give yourself a, a wide uh, stance, you want to be careful of how much stress you're putting on the axle. Because we just talked about how when you get out further from the center, you're increasing the leverage, right, on the tractor. That is, the wheel has more leverage to move the tractor now because it's further from the center. But it also means that there's a lot more stress on the actual tractor axle that's in here. That is, that axle that's in here is a, a short piece, four or five inches long, that terminates right here where these lug nuts are. And we've just increased a, a whole bunch of length on that, so we're putting a lot more pressure, you know, to, to try to break that axle or knock the bearings out of it. So if you're using an implement like a subsoiler, uh, and ripping it through the ground, you know, through really hard ground and you're having to pile a bunch of wheel weights on the tractor to give it adequate traction, or if you're using a moldboard plow or a dozer blade, anything that generates a lot of pushing or pulling force on the tractor or, or requires a lot of traction to move it, the adjustable axle extensions being cranked out to the widest position is really a bad idea because you are, again, the wheels are gripping the ground and pushing the tractor forward but they're doing it via these long posts. So the flexion you're gonna get with the tractor resisting, so you're pulling right here with your implement if you've got a moldboard plow, and you're flexing in on those posts. So you could break the welds on the posts, you could break the tractor axles or knock the bearings out. I mean, these things are not indestructible. All steel parts have limits eventually. So if you're pulling a high torque implement or pushing a high torque implement in the case of a dozer blade, you need to crank those wheels in to a, a, a narrower position. Basically, you know, implements that should be run or could be run safely with the wheels out in these wide positions are things like mowers, um, uh, any kind of light cultivation equipment like a toolbar cultivator on a bed top, cedars, plastic mulch layers, those don't pull that hard. Um, uh, so, and, and running any tillage tools like a power harrow or a, uh, a tiller is fine too because the axle stress is not, the axle isn't taking a lot of stress with those. It's just sort of the axle is moving the tractor along, but it's not having to pull or push through hard material. So, that's that. Uh, thanks for watching.